Welcome to Pure Math 030. This is a lesson on horizontal stretches about the y-axis. The previous lesson covered vertical stretches about the x-axis, so away from the x-axis. Here we're going to be doing stretches about the y-axis, so that would be pushing it or pulling it in a horizontal direction. This will be new information for most of you. So I'm going to start off by comparing three functions. One, just your regular quadratic function, y1 is equal to x squared. And then y2 is equal to 2x squared. Notice that that is 2x in the brackets squared. Now I know some of you are thinking that you'd clear those brackets and write that as 4x squared, which of course is correct, but I'm not going to do it because I'm going to look at it a different way for now. And then the next one, y3 is equal to 1 half x in brackets all squared. So we can take a look at these graphs and I'm going to put them all on the same grid. You can enter these into your calculator if you want to see them, although you might have a pretty good idea of what they look like. So I've got these three labeled y1, y2, and y3. And y1 is the untransformed graph. y2 is 2x in brackets squared. Notice how it's closer to the y-axis. So if you were to view this in a horizontal sense, it's moved closer to the y-axis. It's been compressed. And then y3 is further away from the y-axis. So let's go through each of the y2 and y3s individually and see what we can learn from them. So y2 is equal to 2x in brackets squared. This would indicate a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 half about the y-axis. So it is moved closer towards the y-axis. And therefore, the stretch factor has to be less than 1 otherwise would be moved further. So the direction is inward towards the stretch line. And it is the reciprocal of that factor of 2, so 1 over 2. Let's take a look then at y3. This one, which is further away from the y-axis, is actually a horizontal stretch factor of 2 about the y-axis. So it's been stretched, it's been pulled away from the y-axis. Let's compare two other graphs. This is your s square root function, y1 is equal to square root x. And then the second one is y2 is equal to the square root of 4x. So here, too, some of you would be thinking, ah, I could take the square root of that 4 and then write it outside as a vertical stretch. And of course you could. I'm not going to, though, for the time being. Now, before I even graph this, I'm going to follow the same pattern that we saw earlier. I'm going to say that this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of one quarter about the x-axis, the reciprocal of that number. And if that's true, it should be pushing it towards the y-axis. These would be easy to check on you to confirm on your calculator. And you should get a graph look or graphs looking like this. I have labeled a point 4 comma 2 on y1 and that is correct if x is 4 y would definitely be 2 square root of 4 now what I want to observe about this one first off is that in fact y2 has been squeezed towards the y-axis it's got that horizontal stretch factor so remember that's going horizontally in this case inwards toward the y-axis so it looks like it's going up a little bit higher but um, don't think of this as a vertical stretch just yet. Think of it as a horizontal stretch. But what's interesting with this one is what happens to that point, 4, 2. On the second graph, if you go straight across, that point is 1, 2. So the y-coordinate remains as 2, but the x-coordinate 
is multiplied by a factor of one quarter. So four comma two on y one is equal to square root x is transformed into one comma two on y two equal four to the x. When you think about it, this should make sense. Because it was a horizontal stretch factor, the y coordinate is unaffected. Only the x is affected. And because we have already identified that this is a stretch factor, horizontal stretch factor of one over four, it would make sense that every, every x coordinate would get multiplied by one over four. So this is true for all the points along the curve. You pick a y coordinate, go on the one graph, and it will be unchanged on the second graph. It's just that the x coordinate would get multiplied by one fourth. So let's summarize this information. Okay, first off, I'll note this x coordinate was multiplied by one quarter. And in fact, what I said was true, but more generally, the horizontal distance from the stretch line was multiplied by one fourth. Now this will be an issue when we start stretching off other lines. So here's the general statement. For any function y equal f at x, y equal f at bx will indicate a horizontal stretch about the y-axis by a factor of 1 over b. So this is telling us that when you replace x with bx, so the factor, we usually call it b, sometimes the letter will change, it will be right in front of the x, it'll be the coefficient of the x term, and it's always the reciprocal, so 1 over b. So as we've seen before, horizontal transformations are always opposite to what they appear to be. So all points x, y on y equal f at x will transform into x over b comma y on y equal f at bx. So you see that factor of 1 over b will be uh, um, multiplied by the x. And the other observation there is that x is replaced by bx in the equation. So it's a little tricky to get this down. It, usually the horizontal stretches are the part that people struggle with the most. So let's describe a few graphs and see if we can get uh, the, the hang of this. Here we have a simple looking absolute value function. f at x is equal to the absolute value of 2 over 5x. Now I'm not going to graph this one, but relative to the untransformed graph, f at x equal absolute value of x, we would say that this is a horizontal stretch, hs, by a factor of 5 over 2 about the y-axis. So it's the reciprocal of that coefficient with x. This graph, this function, has got 1, 2, 3, 4 transformations. And this is, gradually we're looking at ones with more going on. So I'll start with the first one. This negative would indicate a reflection in the x-axis. We've seen that earlier. The 5 in front of the function is a vertical stretch by a factor of 5 about the x-axis. So we were confronted with this again. When the y is isolated, it tells us that the vertical stretches are as they appear to be. They're honest. If it, there's a 5 there, then we have a stretch factor of 5. And then the 5x would indicate a horizontal stretch by 1 -fifth about the y-axis. So notice that the horizontal transformation, the stretch, is the reciprocal. It's wrong. And then the plus 1 is a vertical translation of 1 unit up. Here's the last one. f at x is equal to 1 over 5 to the exponent of 1.2x. This is an exponential function 
because the x is in the exponent. It has a base of one-fifth. I'm not going to graph this one as well, but you could very easily on your calculator. And there's, no tra there's only one transformation, and that occurs in the, in the exponent. Because x has been replaced with 1.2x from your standard untransformed exponential function. And as we've seen, when this is, x has been replaced, that there is going to be a horizontal stretch by the reciprocal of that factor, 1.2, which is 1 over 1.2. Now, if you wrote that 1 as 1 over 6 over 5, the reciprocal would be 5 over 6. So that's in its simplest form about the y-axis. Your calculator would do that for you. So that's the basic information on horizontal stretch factors. Your first uh, task will be to get good at identifying them, and then the next lesson will start looking at um, combinations, a few more combinations, and a few of the other sort of test type questions that you can get on this. Thank you for your time.